So welcome to the all new TDUK Fire OS update blocker. What does it do? Well, let's open that up. Let's click on connect. And we now have a very easy to use interface that we can use to block any update from Amazon. Now I covered this process a few videos ago and in that process, we had to type in some ADB commands and so many of you are asking for a simpler method which didn't involve any typing and that's exactly what this toolbox will give you. So in this video today, let me show you how you can use this toolbox with that custom version of ES File Explorer to reclaim so much space on your Amazon device. All you need to do is just hit that like button, make sure you hit that subscribe button. So with all of that being said, Let's get started. If you're new to the channel and you want to stay up to date with the latest tech tutorials, the latest Fire Stick, Android and Android TV tips and tricks, then please do subscribe and hit the notification bell. It's a small click from you, but it makes a big difference to me. Thank you. Okay, so to start this process, go into your Fire TV settings, go to developer options and make sure both these are set to on. Once you've confirmed that, let's press the home key and let's now open up Downloader. Inside Downloader, let's connect to my website by typing in bit.ly forward slash tduk. That's me and the numbers 2019. Let's type that in and click on go or press the play button on your remote. Now, when you get to my website, we're going to head over to the tutorial section. And the way we do that, we go to the hamburger menu and let's click on tutorials and the latest tutorial in the list will be how we can use the brand new TDUK Fire OS update block tool with that custom version of ES File Explorer to completely strip out those system updates. So let's open that up now. Here it is, so let's scroll down. We have some information about what Amazon is constantly trying to do. Here we have the step-by-step -step instructions and just under that, so here is the Fire OS update tool. Let's click on that, scroll down and click on the green download button. Let's give that a second. And we can now click on install. Once you've done that, let's click on done. Click on done again. Let's press the back button on the remote. And we're now going to get the second file, which is the custom ES file explorer mod. So let's click on that. Once again, scroll down and click on the green download button and click on install again. And once that's completed, we can click on done and press the home button on your remote. Okay, so you've installed both those applications from our tutorials page. The first thing we're going to do is open up ES File Explorer to uninstall some of those system updates. Now, in my last video, I only removed a couple of things. So let me show you exactly some of those big things that you can uninstall to get that valuable space back. Now we can see on my device, ES File Explorer actually appears in my apps library. Now, some of you are saying that you weren't able to see this. And if you have that problem on your device, all you need to do is go over to your settings go to applications and before we open up managed install applications let's just note that my device has 736 megs of free space at the moment okay let's go into that and we can now launch ES file explorer this way and you need to do this if you can't launch it from your home screen let's open that up and let's click on launch now one key thing you can do here which I didn't mention in my last video is by default this will show you your applications including your normal applications. But if you go to the top where it says user apps, I can click on that and just say, I only want to focus on system applications because to be fair guys, I mean, if you have big applications installed like Plex or, or Peacock TV, you can just uninstall them yourselves. But what we want to focus on is those big system applications. So let's go to the top once again, and let's click here and select system apps. And these are the applications that Amazon keeps on updating, even if you never use them on your device. So for example, if I don't use uh, Prime Video, Amazon keeps on sending updates to it. And if I don't use IMDB TV, Amazon still keeps on sending updates to that. So it's very important that we block these updates at the end of this process. Okay, so in my example, I don't use Amazon Music. So I'm gonna click on that and select uninstall and click on okay. So any updates that this application has previously received has now been removed from my device. Okay, so I don't use Amazon Photos. So once again, I click on that and select uninstall. 
Now the screensaver is a big one and I know lots of you complain that the cache of this builds up a lot. So I do recommend clicking on that and also selecting uninstall. So that's three things so far. Now I don't use Amazon free time. Again, let's click on uninstall. So that's four things. And this is where it gets a bit interesting. So if you don't use Alexa on your device, and I know lots of you don't because you have issues with privacy and you know what Amazon capturing about you. If you don't use that on your device, I can just click on that and select uninstall. Click on OK. But of course, guys, if you do use the application, don't uninstall it. OK, so I don't use Alexa shopping. I'm going to click on that and click on uninstall. So is that five or six things so far? I don't need the Amazon news. Let's click on that. Click on uninstall. Click on OK. That's seven things. I definitely don't use IMDb TV. Let's click on uninstall. That's eight things. Nearly there, guys. Now, I do use Prime Video, so I do recommend leaving the Fire TV player because that's actually what drives the content for this. So if you do use Prime Video, then don't touch this and also don't touch the Fire TV player. Let's keep going down. Let's also take off this one. Click on uninstall. Click on OK. So that's the nine things I've uninstalled on my device. Again, if you don't use things like Prime Video, you can also uninstall these two, which will give you 11 things that you've uninstalled the updates for on your device. So that's it for Amazon updates. Let's also go to internal storage. Let's go down to the downloader folder. And I also recommend clearing the stuff out in here. Oh, there's actually a button here for select also. I should have really done that. But once you have everything highlighted, let's click on delete and uncheck this box that we don't want to move things to the recycle bin. We want to permanently delete them. So let's untick that and click on OK. And we see that the message that those files are now being deleted. And last, if you go back to home, click on the three dots here and click on file analyzer because this will then analyze all those applications and show you which applications have the largest app cache. And let's scroll down and here it is here. So I can click on that. And this then shows me all of those applications in order going from largest to smallest. And here we can see on my device, this application has 36 meg cache. And if I click on the icon on the right of it, and I can click on clear cache. Now on your device, you may notice other applications which have much larger cache, depending on how you've used these applications. And the moment of truth, guys. So we went from about 700 megs of free space and we now have 1.76 gigs of space, guys. So do give a thumbs up for that. But before we celebrate, we now have to block those updates coming back onto our device. So let's press the home key and let's now start the all new TDUK Fire OS update blocker. Let's open that up. Now I have tested this personally, both on Fire OS 6 and also Fire OS 7, which is the second generation Fire TV Cube. Now I've not had a chance to test this on the Fire OS 5 devices, but I'm told that it should work. All you need to do to test it is just install this application onto your cell phone or onto an Android emulator, type in the IP address of your Fire OS 5 device, click on connect, and you can then follow the process for the rest of the video. But if any of you guys can test that out for me, I would appreciate that. Okay, so we can leave the IP address as 127.0.0.1 because we are connecting to ourselves. Now, the way this works is this will first ask you for the ADB authorization. And once you give that, it will actually shut itself down and we need to open it up again. So let me demonstrate that. Let's click on connect. Let's now click on always allow and click on OK. And we can see the application is now actually shut down. So let's now launch that again and click on connect. And this time it's gone straight in guys. So the very first time, give that permission, it will then close itself down. But the next time you go back into it, you'll then see the message that you're now connected. And that's pretty much it guys. So we have three easy buttons. We can block the updates, we can unblock the updates, or we can check the status. Let's click on check status. And this will then show you all of the disabled packages on your device. And we can see on my device, those three packages, the last three are the ones regarding the Amazon update. So if you see that on your device, that means your device is already blocked for updating. And the way we can verify that, I can press the home key, go to MyFi TV, click on check for updates. And what's going to happen? Sorry, Amazon, we don't want any of your updates. So on my device, we can see it's not going to receive any more updates. And those applications where we've uninstalled the update, they're just not going to get any updates anymore, which in turn means that they're not going to take up any more space on our device. Okay, let's back out of that. 
And if you want to unblock the updates for whatever reason, you can click on this button here and this will then enable them again on your device. And a key thing to mention here guys is, even though those updates are disabled on my device, it doesn't break any of your applications from Amazon receiving updates. In fact, can I demonstrate that? And here, for example, we can see this application. If I press the context key, it has an update. I can click on update and click on update again. Just to prove that making this change only blocks the system updates, it doesn't block any of your applications like these applications receiving updates. And we can see that's working absolutely fine. We're getting the latest version of this application and that's working great guys. So let's back out of that and let's say we want to unblock. Let's click on that, give that a second and that will then re-enable those system updates. So the next time you go to settings, MyFi TV, click here, it's gonna then start downloading all of those updates again onto your device if you want that. So that's all for this video guys. Many thanks for watching. Lots of you are asking for more system applications that we can remove and how we can easily block them from coming back. So I do hope you like this video. Also quick update on the accessibility services. My developer is still working on that. Unfortunately, there's no fix so far. So if you are on the latest version of the Amazon update, unfortunately you can't use a custom launcher. But as soon as I get the good news, I will be making a video straight away for all of you guys. So if you did find this video useful, then do give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more stuff like this, then please do subscribe and hit the notification bell. As always, I always appreciate your likes, your shares, your comments. So do let me know what you think. Leave me a comment below and I'll hopefully catch up with you guys real soon. Thanks.